Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at pulling a site down from my Pantheon dashboard to my local computer. Now, if you're not familiar with Pantheon, it's a popular Drupal and WordPress hosting solution, and I'm at the dashboard right here. And I want to use a project called Lando, which is a local Docker orchestration project that will allow me to spin up my site with all the dependencies that it needs in order to run. And now there's a nice integration between these two platforms. So Lando has some commands that will connect directly to your Pantheon dashboard and pull your site information. So your code base, your database, and your files and help you in spinning up that site. So let's take a look at doing that. I'm logged in here and this is my Pantheon account. So I'll go to my account tab. And then over here, I'll go to machine tokens. And then I don't have any tokens yet. So I'll just create this new token and I have to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this Lando and then I'll generate my token. So now I'll copy my token and you wanna save this in a secure location because once you go away from this, you won't be able to find this token again. So copy this and save it somewhere secure that you have access to it later. And then I'll say, I understand. And now I have the ability to revoke this if I later want to. So if I lose access to my token or I don't wanna connect with that service, I could just revoke this and then I could create new tokens if I want to in the future. So then if I flip over here to my terminal, I'm already in the folder that I want to clone the site into. So if you look in here, it's an empty folder. Now make sure you're actually in the folder where you want the files from your website to be in. So for instance, all the document root files are going to be right in this directory. I wanna save you a little time in case you have some other files in here and you accidentally clone your active site into the folder with other files and folders. So just keep that in mind. And now you just wanna run a lando init command. So to initialize the project, and this will give you some options. I'm going to choose the Pantheon option here. Press enter. Now I've already done this before. So I have an option to choose an account that I already have created so I can choose my token from before. Let me just show you what it would look like if you were doing this for the first time. And now it says enter a machine token. So I'm going to control shift V to paste my token that I copied to my clipboard and then press enter. I'm gonna select this option here for my current token. And then it gives me an option to choose the site that I want to choose. I only have one site in my case, so I'm going to select this one, press enter. And then I'm going to enter the password for my Pantheon account. Okay, now if you list the files in this directory, you see that it's all your site files are in here. And there is this .lando.yaml file that was created. And now I can do a lando start to spin up the containers and present my site. All right, now that's all set up. We can go to one of these URLs and see if our site is up and running. So I'm going to right click on this, and copy the link, and I'll just go to my browser here and paste this in. Now, since our SSL cert's not valid for our local URL here, we'll get this warning, but we can go to advanced and just say proceed anyways. Okay, so now we're at a base installation for the website. So it does not have the database information yet, so we can come back here to our terminal and just run a Lando pull. And this will pull the database and other information from the site. So we'll get our files and any code base updates that we need. So we're going to use the dev server, press enter. And we're gonna pull the database from the dev server as well. And we'll pull the files from the dev server. Okay, now that the database and the files have been imported into the local project, we can come back here to our site and let's just reload this URL. And now it shows you this message here that says you have an existing site, so you can click on view the existing site. So if I come back to my terminal here and I take a look here and I run a command called lando drush cc all to clear all the caches in my Drupal 7 site, you see that I get some errors here. Now if I scroll up and I take a look, it looks like the problem is that the cache table doesn't exist. So you see it says pantheon.cache, pantheon is the database name, cache is the table name. And so it looks like it can't find that. So let's just open up a MySQL prompt here by running Lando MySQL. And that'll put us into a MariaDB prompt because that's the SQL database we're using. And I'm just going to show the databases that I have listed here. And you'll see that we have one database called Pantheon. Now that's our Drupal 7 database. So we want to target that one to see the tables inside there. So first I'll run a use 
Pantheon command to use that database. And then I'll just show the tables within that database. You see there's a bunch of Drupal 7 tables here. If I scroll up and I look for the cache table, there's a lot of cache related tables, but there's no base cache table that has nothing prepended to the end. So if I come over here to my browser and I take a look at this drupal.org post, there is a command here that shows how to create the cache table. So it gives you all the structure for the columns and the types of columns that are needed for that table. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to run that create command inside my MariaDB prompt and I'll press enter to create a empty cache table. And then I'll just exit out of my prompt. And from here, I can just run the Lando Drush cache clear all command one more time. And now it completes successfully because we have that table in our database. Now, if I go back to my website and I reload it, you'll see that the website comes up fine this time. So I think what's happening here is that Pantheon is handling caching on its own. So it might have a cache related module that's enabled and locally we don't have access to that module. So that's possibly why that cache table is missing, but I'm not sure if this is going to happen every time I try to land a pull. So just keep that in mind if you experience the same problem, you can just go and manually recreate that table if you ever have to do that. Maybe it's worth opening up a bug with the Lando team or the Pantheon team to see if we can get this fixed in the future. But for now that should work fine for you. So you notice that we have some changes in our local project now. So if I do a git status, you'll see that we have this new file, this .lando.yaml. So this is not being tracked by git yet because it was created when we created our Lando project. So I could add this file if I wanted to, and then I could just commit it like a normal file. And I'll just say that I'm adding Lando to the project and I'll commit that. And then I could push these changes up to the Pantheon site if I wanted to. So I could do a Lando push. And by default, this is going to push all the code base changes, but it won't push my local files or my local database since often those types of things are used for testing locally and you actually don't want those to overwrite anything on production. Now you can pass additional flags to overwrite those by default, but for now, if you just run this command, it should just push up the code. Keep in mind that this isn't actually going to make any changes on the live site because the .lando file is just used for our local Lando project, but you should be able to see these commits on the remote environment if we go and look at the Pantheon site again. So let's push that, press enter, They'll give us a prompt to see which environment we want to push our code to. So I'll select the dev environment. And then it asks if we want to overwrite the database. I'll say none, that's the default. And I'll press enter. And it'll ask a similar question for the files. Again, we'll say none since that's the default and we don't want to overwrite any of the production files with our test files locally. And then it just asks what we change. So this is basically like a git commit that gets recorded on the Pantheon platform. Now, if I go back to my Pantheon website and I go to the dev environment, you should see here that our new commits are listed in the commit log. So you can see that our changes were able to be pushed from our local to our dev environment. Hopefully that helps you integrate a Lando project into your Pantheon sites. If this was helpful for you, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And we'll see you soon with more content like this in the future. All right, thanks and take care.